You can have the funding lined up, you can know all the numbers, but if you don't know the best place to buy houses that are gonna meet your long-term goals, you could be screwing yourself. In this video, I'm gonna talk about finding your core focus and finding the best properties to meet your goals so that you're buying houses the right way from the beginning. If you think puppies are cute, hit the like button. In this video, I'm gonna cover the three components and the three filters that you need to look through when you're analyzing what type of properties you wanna buy and what areas of town you wanna buy them in. This is the third video of a five-part series on an action plan that will get you set up so you can go buy rental properties in 30 days or less. When I got started, I was so excited to invest in real estate that I just told everybody, send me all your deals. And that's not the way to do it. I did not have a core focus that did two things. The first thing it did was people just sent me everything all over, two hours away, three hours away, stuff that I would never buy in horrible parts of town or in like super, super wealthy parts of town and deals that just didn't make sense for me. So people just sent me all their crap, honestly, and I didn't have time to go through it all. I would go through a few of them or I wouldn't have time to go through them and I wouldn't get back to them and then they just stopped sending me stuff. So that's not what I wanted. The other thing it did that was not good was people didn't even send me stuff because there's no way that a new investor is going to be able to buy all across town and buy all these properties. He's just another blowhard and he's not actually serious about it. So I'm not gonna send him my stuff. So I either got crap properties or people that had good properties didn't send me. Neither of those things are good. Once I started to develop a core focus and could say, I'm looking for properties built after 1950 with at least three bedrooms that are 250,000 ARV or under, when you have that type of story that I started to develop, people will send you those deals as they come across them because they'll remember you and you're that specific about it. So having core focus will help people remember you and send you more properties so you buy more properties, but also you'll be buying the right properties in the right place to meet your goals. And that's what we're gonna get into now. So let's help you create your core focus. I also had to decide if I wanted to find appreciation houses or cash flow houses. Appreciation houses are houses in nicer areas that go up in value as the market goes up but they might not cash flow as much. And cash flow areas are houses that cash flow really well because they're not in as nice of areas, but they're not gonna go up in value. They're one of those areas that kind of just stays stagnant as far as the value. What I did was kind of melded the two. The houses that I buy and the houses that I love that meet my core focus are houses that go up in value a little bit. They're in you know B class type areas. I have a video on the different classes of real estate if you wanna check that on my channel later, but just finding houses that go up in value a little bit, but also provide a decent amount of cash flow. So I kind of melded the two. I like that because it is a risk or a hedging the market. For my long-term goals, I like having a mix of cash flow and appreciation. All right, now let's go over the three filters there's are three components that you use when you're figuring out your core focus. We're gonna start small on the actual property and then we're gonna work our way out. So number one is the actual property, the physical property. You need to know what type of properties you wanna buy. You're gonna to wanna to know what type, whether you're looking at single family, duplexes, triplexes, you're gonna to wanna to know the size. You don't wanna buy too big of houses or too small of houses for what your long-term goals are. You're also gonna know the age of the property. So we're talking about all the physical attributes of the property. I said earlier that I like houses built after 1950. The reason I said that because after the 1950s, home building got a lot more updated, I guess I would say. Before the 1950s, there's a lot of knob and tube wiring, which is dangerous and very expensive to replace. There's asbestos, just a lot of things weren't quite buttoned up. And after the 1950s, construction got a lot better. So the houses that I buy and I throw in my rental portfolio, most of them are built in the 1950s or later. They're just a lot easier to maintain as well as they're a lot easier to rehab and get in rent ready condition. So that's my focus. I know a ton of people that like older houses and older homes because that's the area that they wanna be in. We'll get into the area here in a little bit, but they like that. They like having older houses because they're gonna Airbnb them or they just like having those unique type properties. And that's not what I like and that's not what my focus is. And that's fine. What my core focus is doesn't necessarily need to to be your core focus and it probably shouldn't be honestly 
Mine is for what I want to accomplish. So you need to set your own goals and start to use these filters to find properties that meet those goals. Before I get to the second filter, I want to let you know I do have a bonus tip coming up at the end, so stay tuned for that. The second filter that you're going to look through when determining your core focus is based on the numbers, and they're tightly tied to the geographical area. So we looked at the property, and now we're going to kind of take a little bit of a step back and look at the numbers, and these numbers are tied to the location of the property. This is kind of a recap of the last video I just shot, so if you haven't checked that out after this video, make sure to go back and watch part two two of this five part series, but knowing your numbers, you're going to need to look and figure out what areas you're going to want to be buying in as it pertains to, let's say, taxes. If you're wanting to own houses in an area that has higher taxes, that can be a good thing. There's probably less vacancy. It's most likely a nicer area, but you do have to know that when you're running your numbers and you have to run the higher taxes in your cash flow formula. And if you're in that area with higher taxes, you're probably going to be able to offset that with higher rents. So getting higher rents is great, but not as many people can afford $4,000 a month rent as opposed to $2,000 a month rent. So that's fine if that's what you wanna be and where you wanna be, that higher rent, that higher tax area. Just know there's less people that can afford it, but the people that can afford it probably are going to be a little bit easier tenants to deal with. That's another thing to kind of consider. I just kind of talked about it, but areas that have higher rent have usually lower vacancy. And areas like that are going to usually have higher appreciation, so you're not gonna get cash flow. Again, I like that middle ground, decent taxes, decent rent, decent appreciation and pretty good cash flow. And to find these numbers is not really that hard. You can talk to local real estate agents. Zillow has a lot of this information. You can also find a lot of this on your local city or county tax records. Number three is more of a 30,000 foot view. It's more of a macro view. You're gonna kind of look at the entire area. You're gonna look at job growth. You're gonna look at amenities. How close are shopping centers? Can they walk to the grocery store? Just look at the bigger picture of somebody actually living there. What does it look like to live there? Do you wanna own in an area where they can walk to every single amenity in five minutes. And many of these can be a lot of things. They can be shopping malls. They can be how close is it to the highway so people can get to work quickly or is it kind of off the beaten path. Just taking a step back and looking at the general area, looking at crime and things like that, just what type of amenities and what types of areas do you want to own properties and do you want to hold rentals in for the long term? Because when I look at a rental property, I look at me owning it for at least 20 years, if not longer. So are you comfortable owning real estate assets in the area that you're looking at. You can also look at job market growth or development in the area to see where hopefully that area is going to go over the next 5, 10, 20 years. If you see a lot of developments coming around, that's usually a good thing. People are building and spending money in that area so that will attract more people and more tenants and hopefully higher paying tenants that can afford to live in nicer areas where people are willing to build things but you kind of do have to keep an eye on it. If they're building a prison a quarter mile away, maybe that's not the best area to be in or you don't want to be in that area. So basically look for targets and Starbucks and not prisons. You're going to want to lean on your agent because they're an expert in this area, but you can't run them ragged. That's why I want you to focus on one area or at least start out that way, not running them all over town. Getting that core focus, they'll gladly help you find deals in those areas. Before I give you the bonus tip, make sure to like and subscribe if you have not. All right, here's the bonus tip. You can find out all this information online. You can simply Google whatever question you have or type it in YouTube or type it on my channel and there will be hundreds if not thousands of videos about these topics. I know that's kind of a joke, but it's really not because you can find anything online. All this information in this video can be found online. All the information you need to know to buy real estate can be found online. Don't be scared to type it into Google. You'll probably find the answer there. If you haven't seen the first two videos in this series, make sure to go back and watch them or they're getting ready to pop up on the side of the screen. Click on them and get watching. See you on the next one.